are we letting the most valuable resource that we create on a daily basis go down the drain? Well, this right here is a compost toilet bucket right here. It's very simple with biochar, wood chips, or even animal bedding pellets that are shredded. You can handle humanure at home. And so how do I know this? Well, oh, let me put that down. <laughs> well, let me tell you a story. I had my family on this mountain in this house that it was one road that led up to this whole neighborhood area. And every single time it rained, every time we had a windstorm, and every single time we had a bad snowstorm, the power would go out. It may, it may dip for a few hours, it may go out for days, and our water was connected to the power. So at this house on top of this mountain with this one road that led up, it was very steep, when it got dangerous on that road, we were marooned and it happened a lot. And in fact, when we got snowed in last year, we were marooned for seven days, no running water. So all of our water storage was our only water. We didn't know how long this would, would last. Um, I was using the solar panels. I was using our backup batteries. It was, it was intense. I was using the generator. We ran through most of our gas. I was running my business and everything, my course, you know, at the same time and trying to, you know, keep up a semblance of normalcy, waiting for that road to clear. And one of the number one issues was water because we didn't have much water and we certainly couldn't use it to flush the toilet. So we couldn't flush the toilet. So we stopped using the toilet. So we had to use a bucket. We had to use wood chips, biochar, and in order to control the smell, the biochar did help, no doubt, but in order to really control the smell, we needed to use EM. And so effective microbes were able to ferment, they were able to turn that nitrogen in the manure, in the human manure, the humanure, into amino acids. And it was able to transform that in a very short period of time. We were able to cap it, put it outside in the greenhouse as we were filling them up. Um, because over the course of the winter, we filled up several. And so you can, you can totally handle humanure properly. If you are composting it, maybe you're doing a manure pit, your humanure pit, you've got an outhouse, and you're capping it and leaving it for a year. Maybe you've got it in a barrel system, so you're catching everything and then capping that barrel for a year. There's a lot of ways that people have done this and proved that there are many different ways to do it safely. EM is a great way to control the smell. EM is a great way to create a pathway to turn that nitrogen that would be gassing off into something of value. And if you capped it, it wouldn't be gassing off, right? It'd be trapped in that cycle and it would be part of that cycle. And you can even put EM when you're capping it if you don't have a, uh, an EM system going right now. If you, at the end of you know your, your outhouse's lifespan, you want to, to cap it and have it you know really thoroughly processed, really uh, well digested at EM when you cap it. And you probably cut down the, the time immensely. I don't know the exact time because I've never had anyone cap one of those large barrels and do it. I've only done it myself with a small and I left it there for months. So this is something that we need to address because it's so basic. All animals are eating the food that they prefer and then manuring there to feed the plant. It's part of the plant's like plan, you know what I mean? It's putting out those fruits, um, just like it's putting out exudates on every root hair and on, its, uh, on every like uh, hair part of the body of the plant. They're putting out these exudates so that the fungi and bacteria come and then the other microbiology come and it's their plant weight, I mean, it's their microbiological waste that feeds the plant. And it's that manure that is the cycling of that process. So everything from micro to macro revolves, revolves around manure. We talk about how cows, you know, those cow patties, when they're spread out by the birds on Joel Saladin's farms, how they are always bringing back the fertility and it's that fertility loop that is often so broken in these controlled animal feeding operations, these CAFOs, these feedlots. So we have this amazing situation where we have for hundreds of years mishandled, at least in the West, um, human manure. 
And if you want to have a little quick history lesson about this, think about the way Europe, you know, uh, handled its waste and how it led to like plagues and diseases and all these things. And then think about how Asia was using night soil, composting it, using it in the fields, and they avoided all those those plagues, diseases, and all those sorts of things. And there's this new study that people have conducted where there's this link between the microbes in our manure and the plants and the soil life such that the plants feed us exactly the nutrition that we need for optimal health when we are fertilizing it with our own manure, our own urine. And this study makes a lot of sense because the microbiology in our gut and the microbiology in the soil are in a constant communication when you do this. You're putting information in and you're getting information out. As Dr. Bruce Lipton of Stanford says, all food is information. Because when we take in food, there are these micro, these tiny micromolecules that are indestructible in our digestive system. Uh, you know, they're not indestructible, you know, anyway, but, but, they're, but they're, they're not destroyed in our digestive system. And in fact, they travel through our digestive system and go right to the cell walls. And they, are, they, they interact with the cell walls themselves and they modulate the cell protein creation. And we are protein creating machines, as he likes to say. And it modulates the epigenetic function of that cell. So in other words, food is information for our cells, and the expression of our cells is what we call our health or unhealth. And so we're constantly replicating, we're constantly creating new cells, replenishing our cells, regenerating our cells, and the quality of those re replications really is determined by the food we eat, by our perspective, by our environment and our habits, and also by the genetics that we inherited from our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents and even great-great-great-grandparents. So we are a product of that, no doubt, but we are also have all this diet, choice, perspective, and other elements involved in this that we have a lot of control over. And one of the things that we're not doing that we could be doing and this is an immense value. This is money on the table. This is health that we're being denied. This is just ease. You know, I mean, the reality is people are paying for fertilizer. People are doing all this stuff. They're having this great diet, and then they're flushing away that really great manure. And it, we've, it's got to stop. We've got to get rid of the medications. We've got to go natural with our medications. And we've got to turn to nature to get healed. And then our manure, our human manure, our humanure will be of higher quality. And so what are some steps that we can take? Well, number one, I mean, people talk about how Americans eat too much meat. Well, night soil, um, when it was on the market in the Edo time period of Japan, the highest paid, because they paid people for their humanure, okay? They paid people for their humanure. Think about that. The highest paid, um, the highest prices went to vegetarian manure. So the uh, wealthier meat eating, you know, um, sugar consuming um, manure producers did not get paid as much or did not even get bought because they needed to find so much carbon to pair with it in order to compost it. Higher the nitrogen, more carbon. And in the Edo period, deforestation was so high and overpopulation was so high that finding carbon sources was more difficult and it made it all the process all more expensive. So we have a long history of working with manure, of safely working with manure. And recently someone said, you know, you know, there's a good reason it's illegal, uh, you know, that we were not allowed to work with manure. It's a good reason. You know, and, um, you know, ignorance and fear go hand in hand. And when I hear that, like, we're not allowed to work with black water or to work with our human or it's against the law, I immediately think about, you know, what they're reinforcing those people that are like, hey, man, that's against the law. Because in my mind, I'm like, okay, it comes out of your body. It's from the food that you put in your body. So um, are we going to suddenly have other laws that, that work this way? So like if you get a cut and you're bleeding, 
um, are you now, it's illegal for you to treat that because that's coming out of your body. You know, you know, that's a health hazard. You know, that's a safety issue. You could, you could be really hurt. Uh, so it's illegal for you to put a Band-Aid on that. Or your hair, your hair comes out of your body. Um, you can't cut your hair anymore, just like you can't cut your lawn anymore unless you have a license. Um, we're living in a society that's increasingly wanting to um, put government regulation on basic human behaviors, and, and uh, it is anti-freedom, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion. These things that we as a people care about, that we're fighting for, that we've always been fighting for a more perfect understanding and expression of, those are being attacked when you say it's illegal to garden, illegal to have chickens, illegal, you know, <laughs> to use your own urine or manure or to, you know, uh, do, do stitches at home, to do the, like, I mean, I know people who are treating their kids, you know, because they were, you know, vets in, in Iraq, you know, and they're using the super glue on their kids' cuts instead of spending thousands of dollars at the hospital. But you know what? They could get in so much trouble for that. I know people, ah, oh, it just drives me nuts. I know people doing things better, so much better than the system we have now. The reality is we need to grow up as a, as a nation. We need to grow up as a culture. We need to take responsibility for ourselves. We need to take, take responsibility for our own crap. <laughs> we need to take responsibility and, and, you know, and turn that problem, that hazard that, you know, they're so afraid of into something that's incredibly valuable, undeniably valuable, like life-changing and ecologically like rejuvenating and we could be doing that today we could be doing that tomorrow we could be doing that forever from now on closing the loop because it's the most basic contradiction of human culture that we can't handle our own manure that we are gathering our manure into these large piles of crop that are stinking, that are vile, that are hazardous and putrid, and we don't know what to do with it. And we have these, these, these people working in these waste things and being like, why are they adding all these things? We're doing our best to try to treat it. We're trying to... But if we just all dealt with it ourselves, if we had responsibility, if we had some self-reliance, if we had understanding and knowledge to replace that ignorance and that fear, then, then we would be exercising our true freedoms, participating in nature the way it was meant to be, and accessing that greater level of health. So... Should we be afraid of humanure? Should humanure be illegal? Should something that comes out of your body be something that you're not allowed to touch, that you're not allowed to work with, that you're not allowed to address and take responsibility for? Should governments and only, you know, uh, like experts that uh, went to special schools that most of us can't afford to go to make all these kind of personal decisions for us? Should they be the ones to decide about our families and about our bodies, what do you think? I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And if you would like to learn more about soil science, permaculture living, how to make this stuff part of your daily life, how to dive deep into the science and understanding, join us in the new Kickstarter for Permaculture Soil Science and Solutions. It is books, courses, teacher's guides. Every level is addressed. You've got to check this out. This is, this is the linchpin in all existence, in all culture, in all life. I'm Matt Powers. Check it out. It's going to be awesome. It's, all, it's already funded. So there's no risk. Just hop in. Just join us. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. See ya.